Haptic feedback is something that brings VR just to another level of immersiveness. Just check out these amazing gloves. I think you can see the strings, right? They look super cool. We are now getting one step closer to things like Sword Art Online or maybe Ready Player Me, depending on what camp you're in. Let me know in the comments. These here are the Senseglove Nova. And so far, these are the best haptic VR gloves that I've tried so far. They are like mobile, like that's all I really need and they're not, not like powered by like a huge machine or something uh, not super crazy they are simple to use they work with the quest and everything so thanks a ton to sense club for sending them over first of all we have force feedback so that means the wires are not actively putting the fingers but rather stopping the fingers when you have a virtual collision it's powered by magnets how cool is that then there's vibro tactile feedback so on the fingertips there are little motors that can be triggered that is basically yeah so you can feel vibration it actually goes through your whole hand to at least it feels like. Then we have finger tracking, so all the fingers except the pinky finger gets tracked and um, get also pulled and everything. We have a wireless design, which is actually really important and really helpful. And it works with yeah, pretty much all of the headsets you want, so Oculus, Pico, Vive and more. Let's check out some demos. All right, let's go. So yeah, I'm in that robot factory and now if I start grabbing that bottle, you can hear the magnets already. And I can feel, I can actually feel my, the force, the strings pulling my fingers back. So the cool thing is with this motor is actually, it's not like, yeah, putting the back, actually I just said it wrong. It is putting pressure to actually, that you cannot push it in so much. So I will explain it in a second. But now let me just throw this away. Oh shit, I missed the can. There we go. Push the button to let the overhead crane bring in the robot. And now let me just push this button over here. Yeah, I can actually feel this thing in my hands, which is pretty cool. And if I touch it here, yeah, the feedback is also coming. Now I can grab it with both hands. And it's actually getting pretty close, super nice. So let's just assemble this little robot Use over the here. Lever on the conveyor belt to bring forth the right Hold arm. The lever. Pick up the right arm and snap it to the robot. Alright, alright. Could try to throw it, but <laughs> I think I will just mess things up here. Yeah, I just hit myself. Okay, never mind. Yeah. Use the lever on the conveyor belt to bring forth the left wheel. So let me just grab the last wheel and add it over here. There Pick we go. Pick up the drill from the tool cabinet. Ah, I have to get the screwdriver. There is an arrow. Pick up the drill from the tool cabinet. Oh, man. Let me just push this. So the cool thing is now, if I take this screwdriver, I actually feel it vibrating like it actually goes through on my arm, which is pretty cool. And now I can... And then this one also. I mean, that's not how it the would work in real life. The drill. We just cheat a bit. Please it's not I can do the ah, I can also just like press the button like this and it's like the vibrating is really cool actually okay ah like Iron Man oh it's flying you have successfully assembled the robot Woo! So now guys, I know how to assemble a robot. Unfortunately, these are not for the consumer market yet. So, I mean, you can buy these. These cost like 5,000 euros. And uh, they are mostly used for enterprise use cases um, like automotive or defense or medical applications or all of these things where, yeah kind of like research based also and uh, not right yet for the consumer market but I'm pretty damn confident that in a couple of years if we stay patient and um, just wait a little bit these things can be yeah, purchased for like a much lower price and then the dream of living in Ready Player One or sort of online just becomes much closer.